indeed, Paul. And what a lovely hymn to finish with this evening, May Jesus. I love thee. Let's bear in a wee word of prayer together before we open and read from the Word. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank Thee tonight for Thy love toward us. We do thank You, Lord, indeed, for Thy Word to us. We pray, Lord, this evening now as we would turn to Thy Word that we would hear Thy voice. And, Lord, we just turn to Thee now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're turning in our Bibles tonight, please, to the New Testament, and we're turning to the Gospel of John, please. John's Gospel, chapter number 5. The Gospel of John, chapter number 5. And John's Gospel, chapter 5, come down with me, please, to verse number 18. We'll commence our reading at verse number 18. And we read here, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, that's the Lord Jesus, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do, for, that, for, that, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son that all men should honor the Son, even as the Father, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. And verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth in him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading from his own precious truth. It's a terrifying fact tonight, dear friends. Boys, but it's terrifying. How many people tonight hate the truth? How many people tonight despise the truth? It's terrible tonight. How many people detest the truth? And how many people tonight deny the truth. Do you know what the sad reality is today, friends? You'll get anybody to believe anything, but you couldn't get them to believe the truth. Now, why do people hate the truth? Why do people despise the truth? Why do people deny the truth? Why do people detest the truth? Do you know why people hate the truth? Do you know why people despise the truth? Do you know why people deny the truth? Because the truth exposes people. It exposes people as to who they really are and what they really are. Do you know what the truth does? The truth tonight makes people feel uncomfortable. Oh, you tell some people tonight from a pulpit, oh, some wee lovey-dovey story that makes them feel, feel good. Man, they'll, he, they'll listen to you for hours. Give them some wee soft, soapy story. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds good. All right, that doesn't offend me. I'll tell you, friend, they'll listen to that for hours. But the truth tonight doesn't expose a man or a woman what they really are. 
People don't want the truth. People hate the truth. Now, who are the people who hate the truth tonight? Who are the people who will despise the truth? Who are the people who would deny the truth? Do you know who hates the truth tonight? The people who need to hear it. That's who despises the truth tonight. People who need to hear the truth. What did the Lord Jesus say? Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And do you know, friend, the devil knows that the truth will make you free, but the devil doesn't want you to believe the truth. And the devil doesn't want you to understand the truth. And the devil doesn't want you to like the truth. But it's the truth people need today. All these wee soapy water sermons are driving people to hell. People today, friend, are sitting in their churches and they're sitting under this illusion. Oh, believing I'm all right. You're not all right. You sit an alcoholic down and you tell that man, listen, boy, you have a trouble with drink, you hey, and you're an alcoholic. What will he tell you? I'm not an alcoholic. He denies the truth. It's the same with the gospel, friends. You tell a man the truth that he's a sinner. It's the first thing he'll deny. Tell a man he's going to hell. It's the f he'll hate that truth. He'll deny it. You tell a man he, know he needs to be saved tonight. Oh, I'm telling you, they'll go mad on you. People hate the truth. People deny the truth. People despise the truth. But Jesus says it's the truth that will make you free. And the sad reality is, friends, those who hate the truth are the people who need to hear the truth. Those who despise the truth are those who need to believe the truth. Those tonight who deny the truth are those tonight who needs to believe the truth. Now, God tonight has a wonderful truth for us. And it comes from the lips of the Lord Jesus. And it comes from my text tonight in verse number 24. Take a wee look at it yourself now and follow with me as I read the text. John's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 24. Now, here's the words of the Lord Jesus. These aren't the words of a Baptist pastor. These are the words of the Lord Jesus. Listen to him. Verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. I say, friends, you'll not get any truth more clear than that. Do you know what you have in that text? First of all, you have a great explanation. He that heareth my word. There's something about Christ's word tonight. Christ's word, you don't only read it. Christ's word speaks to you. That's what sinners need tonight. They need His Word. And unsaved person in this meeting tonight, that's what you need to hear. What did the Apostle Peter say to the Lord Jesus? Lord, to whom shall we go? For Thou hast the words of eternal life. No Baptist pastor has the words of eternal life. No clergyman has the words of eternal life. No priest has the words of eternal life. No pope has the words of eternal life. That's why I point you to the Lord Jesus tonight. For he alone says, I have the words of eternal life. He that heareth my word. 
You know, that's the explanation of the text tonight. If there's anything unsaved, friend, you need to hear tonight, you forget what George McConnell says. You just listen to what Christ says. He that heareth my word. You know the word of the Lord Jesus says? The word of the Lord Jesus says this tonight. I came to seek and to save that which is lost. The word of the Lord Jesus says tonight, listen, I didn't come to make you religious. The word of the Lord Jesus didn't say, I come to make you good. The word of the Lord Jesus says this tonight, I've come to seek and to save that which was lost. You're lost tonight. You're lost in your sin. In Luke chapter 5 and verse 25, the Lord Jesus says, Listen, I haven't come to call the righteous. I have come tonight to call sinners to repentance. It doesn't matter tonight what sin you're involved in. I've come to call you to repentance. Thank God tonight there's no sinner in the gutters of sin that he cannot be called out to repentance. Thank God tonight Christ loves the sinner. Many, many years ago, the year, in fact, was 1942, during the awful dark days of the World War II in London, there was a man who lived there, a well-to-do man, and he was a Jew. He was a man who lived with riotous living. Even though he went to the synagogue, he was a man who was an expert at playing cards, an expert at cheating, a man who made loads of money. He said later on in life, gambling was his God. He said the casinos were his paradise and money was his goal. Until September 1942, some wee lady on a dark night with a shawl lapped round her handed him a wee booklet called Grace and Truth. He didn't look much at it that evening. But when he opened that little booklet that evening when he went home and got into bed, he took it out of his pocket and began to look at the first chapter. Do you know what the first chapter was called, for there is no difference? And this wee booklet said there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. And that's true tonight. Do you see in God's eyes there's no difference? In God's eyes tonight there's no difference in Protestants and Catholics. In God's eyes there's no difference between rich and poor. In God's eyes there's no difference from black and white. There's no difference, friends. There's no difference. And the thrust of that message was that, this tonight, was the following lines after those text, that we text. There is no difference. And this is what it says, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. That man said that night, sitting in that bed, I was doing more than reading his word. I was hearing something that I never heard before. You see, the word of God tonight is quick and it's powerful, sharper than any two words at sword. The next morning he got up and he went to a neighboring house that belonged to, a, it was called a parsonage. He went to talk to the vicar about what was happening, and thank God the vicar was saved. And the vicar explained the way of salvation to him. And that man got gloriously saved. What made him think that he heard his voice, he heard his word. His word tonight will always speak of his sufferings. For listen, dear unsafe friend, Christ suffered on that cruel cross for your sins, the just for the unjust, that he may bring us to God. His word will always talk tonight about his death on the cross. God commended his love towards his unsafe friend, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. His word will always talk about his resurrection because he didn't stay dead. Because the third day he rose again from the dead. Oh, his word will always declare his sufferings. His word will always declare his death. His 
word will always declare his rising again. I'll tell you, his word will always talk to you about his coming again, because the Lord Jesus is coming again. What's God trying to explain to us tonight? I'll tell you what God's trying to explain to us. He that heareth my word. That's what we need tonight. We need to hear the pure, clear, crystal word this evening of our Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus says tonight, His Word says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You must be born again. Friend, listen, you don't need anybody else's Word to hear this evening. The text says, He that heareth my Word. That's the explanation of the text. Here's the exhortation of the text. He that heareth my Word and believeth on him that sent me. You may say to me, sure, I do believe in God. Well, I'll tell you something now, friends, the devil believes in God. You read the Gospels, the very demons of hell believed in God. Demons in hell believed in God. Now, what did the Lord Jesus say? He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me. Do you know what he means by that? He means believing on all that He sent me to do. Tell me this tonight. Do you believe not in a finished work? The devil believes in a finished work tonight, but do you believe on a finished work? Because, my friend, it's not what you believe in, it's what you believe on. That counts. And God wants to exhort you tonight, sinner friend, not to believe in, but to believe on the finished work of the cross tonight. There are those this evening, and they're believing in an Anna, and they're believing in everything. Do you know why people can't really see the truth tonight? It's because the devil has their minds blinded. The devil doesn't want you to hear the truth tonight. Do you know why the devil doesn't want you to hear the truth? The devil doesn't want you to hear the truth tonight because the devil believes you'll be saved when you hear the truth. Maybe you don't believe it, but I'll tell you, the devil believes it. Remember the parable of the sower and the seed? Those that, are, that has been sown by the stony ground are they which hear the word of God. Then cometh the devil, and taketh the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. I'll tell you, friend, the devil believes that you'll be saved. And the devil believes in the power of his truth tonight. When I think tonight that God has sown not spirit, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in. And on that cross tonight, my burden, gladly bearing, he bled, I, and he died to take away my sin. You see, friend, tonight you're a sinner. Tonight you're on the broad road. Tonight you have no hope. Tonight you have no Savior. But here's the gospel truth tonight. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me. Listen, God's not asking you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's asking you to believe on him. Sure, I believed in God before I was saved. That didn't make me a Christian. What made me a Christian was on that night, the 26th of August, 1985, sitting in St. James's Parish Church, the parish of Carnteel, in Ochnacloy yonder, Church of Ireland it was too. 
I ventured my faith that night on the atoning work of the Lord Jesus that he accomplished on Calvary's cross. And I knew that night I was born of God. I knew that night I was a new creature. And that's what I did, friends. But so many tonight are under this illusion that everything's all right with their soul. When it's not all right with their soul at all, I'll tell you, there's many church-going people, upright people, good people, religious people, and they've been blinded with an illusion. And they're on the road to hell with the thought of heaven in their head. Do you see the explanation in that text? He that heareth my word, Jesus said. Do you see the exhortation in that text? And believeth in him, on him that hath sent me. Do you see, friend, the great expectation of that text? He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Oh, boys, what a gift to me. What a gift doesn't say you might get it, doesn't say you will get it. The moment you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you have eternal life from that moment. And you don't have to wait today to get it. Thank God I got it 20, 32 years ago Come, You know, friend, this evening the wages of sin is death. Get that tonight. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. It's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, friend, tonight, people tell you life begins at 40. People tell you that. People say, life, oh, life, life begins at 40. I'll tell you when real life begins, when you come to know the Lord Jesus. Life doesn't begin at 40. Life began at 20 for me. That's the age I was when I was saved. Don't be sitting there working out my age now. Life begins at 40. Life begins the moment you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and all that he's done for you. And I'll tell you this, friend. Life came, life began, and it was life with a capital L too. And I'll tell you it's real life. But here's the great exclamation of the text tonight. Look at it again as we're bringing this meeting to a close. And it says this, And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. You know, the natural man looks at life and what happens? People, they pass from life unto death. The Lord Jesus doesn't do that. The moment you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, you pass from death unto life. Here's the great exclamation of this text tonight, and shall not come into condemnation, but has passed from death unto life. Boys, I'm glad for the 26th of August, 85, I passed from death unto life. I'm talking about spiritual death. And sinner friend tonight, see if you have never believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and all he's done for you. Do you know you're, you're condemned already? You're under God's condemnation. You're wide open to God's judgment. And you think of it this evening that the chilling cold hand of death should come and take you like that. You're finished. You're finished. And I'll tell you, you're finished for all eternity. And if it comes to your funeral, you'll leave it hard for me to preach it if I'm preaching on it. Well, if it's here, I will be preaching but I will be preaching the truth to those that you've left behind. But here's the lovely thought of Romans 8 and 1. Tonight. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. See, it's Spurgeon told, told the lovely story of a boat sitting in a harbor on the, on the east coast of America 
It was the days of the slave trade and the dark days of the slave trade. And this well-to-do lady came with a slave, and the slave could hardly walk. She was ill-treated, all desperate, desperate. And this woman got her out and got her down to the vessel, and she could hardly get onto the vessel. And she got her onto the vessel. And the lady says to her, Captain, Captain, if you get this lady to England, well, that means she'll be free. Oh, the captain says she's free already. What do you mean she's free already? The moment she stepped onto my vessel, she's free. She doesn't have to wait to get to England. She's free now. Sinner friend tonight, you're shackled tonight by sin, you're shackled tonight by Satan, you're shackled tonight by an eternal damnation and death. But the Lord Jesus says to you tonight, He that heareth my word and believeth in him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but has passed from death unto life. And that's the truth tonight that people deny. That's the truth tonight that people despise. Trust tonight. That text will ring true for you. He that heareth my word, I, and believeth in him, on him, that sent me, hath, ever, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but has passed from death. On the life. You can pass from death tonight. From death. You can pass from death to me on the life if you would but come. Trust the Savior. Let's pray. Father, tonight,